Hello all and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and help my brain make a little bit of that happy chemical it always seems to be lacking. I'm Ashley Robin, an aspiring artist by day and a true crime enthusiast by night. This series is my new little experimental side project where we take a look at a prominent happening related to true crime for each date in history. I'm up to 19 subs and I welcome those of you who recently joined my channel. I am very excited to have you here and I'm very excited to be having some growth, albeit slow and small. I hope that soon my content is picked up and noticed by people a little bit more and if not I hope that eventually my brain gets the hint and stops putting all the energy into this because you know if it's not giving me some kind of return in some way soon it's not going to be worth my time to continue i would like to be able to push through the first 30 days but at this point i'm just really proud of myself for sticking with it for seven days straight because as i've mentioned in previous episodes committing to changes in my routine is not something that i am typically very good at so yay anyway this is True Crime Time Hop, Episode 7. Warning, the following content may be disturbing to some audiences. If you might be triggered by talk of violence, murder, dead bodies, etc., please exit now and prioritize your mental health. Viewer discretion is advised. Roy Albert DeMeo was born on September 7, 1940 in Brooklyn, New York. He was born into a working-class Italian-American family. In his teenage years, he started to hang out with the sons of his mafia boss neighbor, Joseph Cavacci. He had a turbulent adolescence as his older brother died in the Korean War. Then his father died shortly after of a heart attack when he was only 19 years old. After this, his mother returned to Italy with his young brother to live with family, and he was left alone. He was enticed into the practice of loan sharking by Cravacci because he had nothing to lose and everything to gain. Loan sharking, if you don't know, is when someone with money gives loans to people that otherwise would not qualify to be financed. They then charge exorbitantly high levels of interest for the favor. DeMeo joined the enterprise and was eventually giving the loans himself as he was drawn deeper into a life of organized crime. He began to learn the ways of the southern Italians who were particularly business savvy and cutthroat. In southern Italian tradition, an outsider could become part of the family through a practice called godparenting. Once DeMeo started his life of crime, it wasn't long before he was being noticed by bigger fish and pretty soon he was getting godparented into the Gambino crime family. He was enthusiastic to prove his loyalty to the family and before long, he was doing so by killing for them without thinking twice. Not only did he feel no remorse for the act of killing, he was reported to have told apprentices it empowered him. Quote, once you've killed someone, you can do anything, end quote. So he started training a group of young men on how to execute and get rid of bodies quickly. Roy had previously been a butcher's apprentice, which gave him the experience he needed to skillfully dismember the bodies. He created a method of body disposal that came to be known as the Gemini method, where the target would be lured and then shot, execution style, usually by DeMeo himself. Then they would be wrapped in a towel so there wouldn't be a big mess of blood. The body would be decapitated and chopped up into pieces in a disassembly line kind of fashion. And the chunks of human flesh would be packaged up like meat. Then they would be disposed into various dumpsters. He got a group of local pot-dealing teenagers into the more lucrative business of stealing cars, stripping them, and selling them overseas. This collective of young criminals came to be known by law enforcement as the DeMeo Crew. In 1974, a conflict broke out between the DeMeo Crew and Andre Katz, a young auto mechanic that partnered with them in the car enterprise they were running. It continued to escalate until January of 1975 when Katz paid a visit to the Brooklyn DA's office, where he proceeded to sing like a canary. DeMeo, who had one of the auto crimes detectives in his pocket, learned of the meeting immediately, and he directed his associate Henry Borelli to contact a pretty female friend to be used as bait. 
Before the plot was able to be set into motion, Katz appeared before a Brooklyn grand jury where he testified to what he knew about the DeMeo crew's illegal activity, further solidifying his fate. On June 13, 1975, Babette Judith Glistel successfully lured Katz to her Manhattan apartment where he was led to believe they were going to have a date. Upon arrival, the crew immediately abducted him and took him to the meat department of a local supermarket in Rockaway Beach, Queens. It was there that the Don stabbed Katz several times in the heart, and then he also slashed him several times in the back with a butcher knife. He decapitated his victim and put his head in a cardboard compactor until it was crushed. His body was cut up and packaged before being discarded in the store's dumpster. However, the crew made a miscalculation about when the trash would be picked up and it wound up sitting there long enough to be rifled through and strewn across the sidewalk by a homeless man. Police were called when a passerby walking his dog found Cat's leg laying on the curb. When Babette heard that the man they used her to bait was found dead, she came forward, but the crew's lawyers discredited her and they all walked free. After all that blew over, DeMeo decided it was time to refine the Gemini method so as to not risk getting caught again as he almost did. He chose to start having crew members drop the bodies off directly at the Fountain Avenue dump in Brooklyn, which was capped over and filled in in 1985, and is now a park with no trace of the mountains of trash that once existed there. Sometimes he would have the bodies dumped at construction sites where they would be sealed over by the buildings, or he would put the bodies in barrels of cement that he would have dumped into nearby bodies of water. If the target was particularly disrespectful, their body would be left in the streets to serve as a warning to the victim's affiliates. In 1975, our subject became a partner to a peep show and sex work establishment after the owner was unable to make his payments to the loan shark. DeMeo also began dealing in taboo and illegal porn films at that time, as well as dealing in narcotics despite the Gambino family strictly prohibiting such business. In fall of 1976, Carlo Gambino died and led Paul Castellano to being appointed the next boss of the family. DeMeo was not yet made, meaning he was still to carry out jobs in the street instead of getting to involve himself in white-collar crime, because Castellano felt that DeMeo was too uncontrollable to be made, so he hesitated to do so. It wasn't until DeMeo played a major role in the Gambino family forming their alliance with the Irish-American gang the Westies in 77 that Castellano's view of him shifted and he was made and put in charge of the affairs with the Irish. But there were conditions. He had to abstain from selling drugs and he wasn't to kill anyone without permission, but he couldn't be convinced to submit to the boss's wishes and continued to make stupid decisions that brought way too much heat to the family and its relationships in many ways. I won't detail his downfall for you here right now because he made so many mistakes leading up to his death that I would be here all day telling you about it. But if you want more detail, you can comment below and I'll consider doing a deeper dive on this for you. On this day, January 20th, 40 years ago in 1983, DeMeo's Cadillac Coupe de Ville was found in the parking lot of the Veruna Boat Club in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. The car was impounded by law enforcement to be investigated by the organized crime control detectives. It was during that investigation that a broken chandelier was discovered in the trunk. Underneath it, DeMeo's partially frozen body was laying lifeless. He had been shot multiple times in the head and had one defensive wound to his hand. His son, Albert, believes he was killed by his own people due to being a loose cannon, a liability, and unable to stand up in court against the charges he was facing for his car theft operation. This may very well be the shortest video I've done so far, and I'm going to cut it off there. I could go into detail about his funeral and things that happened afterward in these different crime syndicates, but um, I'm not really getting any engagement in my comments, so I'm not going to put in any more energy than I already have because my kiddos are waiting upstairs for me to get done recording so that we can play cards.
I'd love to get some feedback about the different background ambient sounds and stuff that I'm using and just the visuals, if the minimalistic thing is working for you guys or if I should be doing something else, do you think? The difference between success and failure for me right now as a content creator, as a YouTuber, as an artist, all hinges on you, your engagement, your watching, and I really appreciate that. I hope that you understand that I very much treasure your opinions and your support. So just to let me know if there's something you think I should change because I want this to be entertaining, I don't want it to be annoying, and I want it to be interesting enough to keep you coming back. So I'm open to suggestions. And if I'm doing stuff that really works super well too, I would love to know that as well. Because I'm out here with imposter syndrome, feeling like everything I do is just, you know, making a fool out of myself. And nobody's really saying anything for me to counter that with in my own head. So, yeah. Anyway, I am going to shut up now. Thank you for coming through for a full week worth of episodes. Hopefully my consistency pays off because this was a lot of work this week showing up for all of you. And there will be more. I'm all caught up. It took me half the week to get caught up, but I am now and I'm already researching tomorrow's take. So with that being said, have a good night.